Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Today in History and uh, time to share with you some of the major events that happened on this day many, many years ago. And I'm going back to the year 2016. If you remember the name Adam Johnson, he was a pretty popular uh, English footballer at that time. He had um, about 12 appearances uh, for the English national team, mm -hmm. had played uh, for Middlesbrough, um, Leeds United, Watford, you know, and of course uh, Manchester City. Uh, at, as at the time that this happened, he had moved from Manchester City to Sunderland. Um, he was sentenced on this day in 2016 to six years in prison for sexual activity with a schoolgirl. Um, Johnson continued to play for Sunderland during his bail, and that's one of the things that uh, Big Sam, as it's popularly called, Sam Allardyce, was criticized against uh, for letting him continue to play uh, while you know, he was on, on bail. Uh, he was um, charged over sexual activity with a 15-year-old girl, pleaded, pleaded guilty to the two charges against him and uh, the other one being of child grooming and eventually was subsequently sacked by Sunderland. As at the start of his trial, Johnson admitted grooming the girl and one of the charges of sexual activity relating to kissing her, a 15-year-old. Uh, Judge Rose at that time said Johnson had uh, every opportunity to enter the guilty plea to the charges he finally admitted. He ordered the footballer to pay £50,000 of the prosecution's uh, six seven thousand uh, pounds cost, the trial only lasted about sixteen days, and it was granted bail in order to say farewell to his infant daughter. In that period, of course, he continued to play for Sunderland. Um, after his conviction, Sunderland manager Sam Allardyce faced scrutiny, and I spoke about that earlier, for allowing him to continue to play during his bail. He was eventually released in twenty nineteen after seven half of his, uh, uh, his uh, sentence. Um, he, of course, from 2004 to 2010, had played for Middlesbrough uh, 96 times with 13 goals. 2006, he was on loan at the Leeds United. 2007, on loan at Watford. And, of course, uh, 2010 to 2012, uh, played for Manchester City, seven, three, seven, three appearances for Manchester City, scored 11 goals. And then at Sunderland, where you know, he eventually um, was arrested for... Um, a sexual assault with a 15-year-old. The age of consent in England, I think it was 16. Um, and of course, um, also played for the English national team under 19, under 21, and of course, the, the English senior team from 2010 to 2012. This story is a, it's a, it's a perfect one uh, to describe two things. The first one is how a very promising career can end because of lack of self-control and stupidity, um, mm -hmm. you know, a couple of years earlier, how your career can just be thrown in the gutter, um, how, you know, all the many, many years, because he's, I think he's 33 years now, obviously can't go back to playing football, how, you know, all of those promises that he maybe had had, you know, for a very, very interesting football career, um, have all gone into the gutter because of plain stupidity and lack of self-control. Uh, that's one. And then the second one is how some of the things that people felt were normal or felt were okay um, 10 years ago can still come back to haunt them. And that is, it's just to put that one out there because there's things that people did in 1999 or in 1982 or in you know 2000 or 2005 that in that era weren't you know so much you know of a problem but in 2021 the world is in a totally different place now the me too movement is you know is, is you know all over the place there's more people who are bold enough to speak out there's more people who are um, willing to share you know their experiences from decades ago and so it makes every single person, not just men now, to start to think about the life that they've lived in the past and how much of those you know, activities that they you know, carried out in the past were, um, would not fly in today's world. Um, it also makes you realize how careful you should be really uh, with uh, things like sexual activity. And, and you know, I, I don't see how in any way possible that uh, you know, being with a 15-year-old girl is even a mistake. That's just plain stupidity. Um, and, um, and, and recklessness, and he, he totally deserved jail time, probably should have been in jail for more than six years. Um, but that is Adam Johnson's story, and um, that is how his career ended, um, you know, where he maybe could have continued to make a lot of money playing football for Sunderland and for the English national team. Um, it ended on this, you know, this day in 2016. This is what you'll call pedophilia, isn't it? 
Yes, can be described as pedophilia. The statistics say there are about 42 million survivors of you know, sexual abuse you know, from an adult male and a younger child in the US. It says one in 13 or one in three girls are sexually abused before the age of 18. And one in five children are solicited sexually while on the internet before the age of 18. So you see that that's another, that's another avenue how kids are exposed to the internet and social media pretty early. You even see things online these days about how kids experiment sexually on social media or how an adult male who should be a custodian, a guardian of this child becomes their abuser. Yeah. The great thing is that in countries like this, they have legal systems that punish offenders. But cases like this happen every day in the country, maybe even now as we speak. Absolutely. And parents are scared to speak up. There's the issue of shame. There's the issue of the policemen who are corrupt who tell you, oh, you know, the, you know how they speak, basically. So the, the great thing is, like I mentioned, a functional justice system that we need here in the country. Absolutely. It's not great news from my end to today in history, March 24th, 1998. What happened today in history was the West Side School shooting. So two teenage boys, their friends, they were armed. They went to their school in the afternoon. They pulled the fire alarm. And while everybody was running out of the school to take cover, you know, to exit the fire, the alleged fire, they shot at their teacher and four other students killing five people and injuring about 10 others. A child doing this. And it's sad how rampant this has become in places like the US. You hear mass shootings, school shootings here and there. You know, 10 others wounded, like I said. The two boys that were convicted of five murders, they were convicted of 10 assaults. They were imprisoned until they each turned 21 years. And, uh, you know, there was a memorial a memorial held for the people who had died. About 9,000 people showed up for that. And uh, back in 2019, this guy, this guy who, who had committed this murder, his name is uh, uh, Andrew Gordon, he, he eventually, you know, died in a car crash. That's the story. Oh. Sad, sad day in the West Side School where five people were fatally shot. Well, um... Like you said, uh, it's it's you know as, as a part of uh, United States history. It's a part of you know the United States. Um, it's a sad part of you know their normal over there. And even to, you know until yesterday, you still hear of mass shootings where five people, ten people are killed. Uh, where now you know there's a campaign to stop Asian hate. Uh, if you remember, a couple of days ago, sometime last week, I believe, um, about eight you know Asian women were shot you know in a, in a you know in a spa. Um, so, what you know for me is you know the the most sad part is the fact that all of these school shootings and all of these incidents, these mass you know shootings, have not been able to convince the United States government and the uh, National Rifle Association (NRA) to make new laws or to change the laws with regards uh, or change the gun laws you know in the United States. The politics concerning the NRA and the United States government is so deep and so dirty, I believe, that uh, makes it difficult for new laws to restrict gun ownership and, of course, to, to make it more difficult for a person to just walk into a school and um, kill people. It's also interesting, and I think that research needs to be carried out as to why uh, schools are targeted, why students shoot their colleagues and shoot their, or teachers. rather their fellow st students and teachers. Um, they need to do more research into what exactly uh, makes it happen um, in schools in the United States. Mm. So really, this all goes back to gun laws. Gun laws that are very lax. People have a right to own firearms. And your father, your mother has a firearm. Your teacher offends you. You take a gun and you go shoot. We saw the story. I can't remember what state, but here in Nigeria, this school girl yeah. was found with a, hat, with a locally made gun, a locally made pistol. She said that her teacher had told her to cut her hair. And because she had access to that, she took it to the school and attempted 
to, to shoot at her teacher. So if we're advocating for gun laws in Nigeria, we need to know what exactly we're getting ourselves into. But that's what happened today in history. On March 24, 1998, there was a school shooting in Westside School that led to the deaths of five people and 11 others injured. And I spoke about Adam Johnson, Manchester City footballer, and of course Sunderland footballer, who was on this day jailed for sexual assault of a 15-year-old in the year 2016. That's uh, for today in history. We're taking a short break. When we come back, our first major discussion today is still talking about guns, security, and the life of a governor who has gone to meet President Mohamed Buhari to make certain demands. Governor Samuel Otom of Bainway State. And that's our next conversation here on The Breakfast.